Welcome back to the channel guys and welcome to all my new followers. In this week's episode we're going to talk about some of the differences between shooting with an SLR and shooting with a rangefinder camera. And of course there are some obvious differences. Neither one <coughs> Neither one is per se better than the other. It's just what works for you. This isn't a video where we're gonna bash on the one and bash on the other, because I've used both, and I like shooting with both. Now, as you notice, when I buy a new camera, I'll spend a considerable amount of time with that camera, so it becomes second nature to me to shoot it. And I've been shooting, I, I shot with the FA for over a year, solely with the FA. So I think I have a good amount of knowledge about shooting with an FA and furthermore, ever since I started shooting with, yeah, ever since I started doing, started doing photography, I've been shooting with an SLR, so I'm well versed in that system. Now, in the beginning of the year in January, I bought the Konica 3A and ever since then, I've solely been shooting with the Konica 3A for personal work and therefore a review is coming really soon. I'm working on that currently, but today I just wanted to talk about some of the differences. Yeah, the main obvious differences in shooting with an SLR versus, and I hate to say the word versus, but we'll use it just for uh, the lack of a better term, but versus shooting with the rangefinder obviously is in uh, how you focus. With a rangefinder camera, there is a separate viewfinder window from the lens. So there's going to be a little bit of what's called a parallax. There's a difference. And the closer you focus, the more pronounced that parallax difference is going to be. Thankfully, the Konica 3A has a correction for that. If you focus closer, the frame lines will change in order to um, not just give you parallax difference, but the angle of view that a lens has on the focal plane changes as you focus and the Konica 3A corrects for that. Not all rangefinders do that. Leica, for whatever reason, doesn't even do that. But anyway, um, that's how you sort of focus with, you know, there's a patch in the middle and you're going to line up that patch in order to find focus. It's very accurate. With the rangefinder, the better rangefinder, you're looking for a good base length. The base length is the difference between the viewfinder window and the window which illuminates the focus patch. The Konica 3A has five millimeters, which is very yeah, generous for a 50 millimeter lens. Of course, this is a fixed focal or a fixed lens rangefinder. So we don't really need more than that. We don't need more than five millimeter. If you look at the effective base length of a rangefinder, it's going to be the distance between the viewfinder window and the window that and then you, you're 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 um, measuring that from the center i'll put some b-roll up on that but the difference between the viewfinder window and the window which illuminates your focusing patch and that times the magnification of your viewfinder the Konica 3a has a one-to-one -one ratio a one-to-one -one magnification so therefore an effective base length of five millimeter. The Bessas have such a short, some have even have 23 millimeter effective base length. I get a little nervous um, if you wanna shoot anything above 50 millimeter really with those cameras. But if you're into the rangefinder, that, that's something that I would definitely look at is the effective base length. Of course, the absolute king of base length is I believe the and don't quote me on it, but I think it's the um, M3, the Leica M3 with an incredible 59 millimeter base length. But as mentioned, the Konica 3A really only needs uh, to focus accurately and it does so with a 50 millimeter. 
Now, also a lot has been said, and of course, let's first talk about how we focus with an SLR. An SLR is what you see is what you get. Um, the better SLRs have a split screen and they have a micro prism. And I, I'm pretty fast with that. I don't think either one is faster than the other. If you shoot forever with one system, you're gonna get really fast with that. I, I'm pretty fast with the uh, focusing with the Nikon FA or any sort of Nikon SLR pretty fast. You know, out of focus, their camera in focus. It goes really fast for me. I have still, I feel like I gain, can gain a little bit more speed with my Konica 3A, but neither one is better than the other. Where you do see some more pronounced differences is with an SLR, it's really what you see is what you get. So that's your photo, minus a little bit on the edges, unless you have a viewfinder that uh, gives you 100% coverage. The, I think I have 93% on the FA, don't quote me on that again, but there's a little bit that you're missing. That's where, at least for my Konica 3A, there's nothing that's missing. As a matter of fact, I have a little bit of um, real estate um, outside of the frame lines. And so therefore, if you're out on the street, you can kind of see things coming in and out. And um, therefore, I think that honestly, even though I think, what's his name? I'll put uh, one photographer, I'll put his name up. I forget his name. Um, he shoots with an SLR. I think he shoots with an F3. And that's perfectly fine to each their own. Nothing is better, but out on the streets, and for me, for you know, for documenting daily life, there's nothing like this Konica 3A. Or I can see myself shooting with an, an M3 or an M2. I just think they're so pricey for what they are. This does exactly the same thing. Minus one stop on the top end. This one stops out at one five hundredth of a second, which hasn't helped me back from anything. But for the price, it's just so expensive a Leica. They've become very expensive. Yes, this is a lifetime investment, but the Konica 3A is also a lifetime investment. But anyway, um, Leica's wonderful cameras. So for documenting daily life, this has been a breath of fresh air. I've certainly documented daily life with my FA, but I also always felt like there's something missing there. Now, SLRs, another thing that, um, an advantage that they have over uh, rangefinder cameras is motor drives. Um, they're just going to be, there's just going to be much more SLRs available with a motor drive. I've rarely seen one, if at all. I don't know of any, you know, if you know of any motor drives on an, um, a rangefinder, let me know. Um, that is sometimes a handy feature to have, to have a motor drive available, especially on the F8. It has a wonderful motor drive that's dedicated to that um, brand or to that camera even specifically. Um, and then, of course, another aspect which I think is also often overlooked, if you look at my Nikon FA or my Nikon F100, it does image stabilization and I have, there's just no image sta stabilization available in the rangefinder world. Outside of that, often a lot is said that rangefinders are smaller. That's not always the case. This one is definitely a bit smaller, but it's not to the extent where, oh wow, it's so much smaller that I cannot carry the FA. Um, yeah, in height, it's about the same height, it's about the same length. It's a little bit more compact, which I do love about the um, Konica 3A. Outside of that, um, yeah, the main, another difference is that, and that's not necessarily, um, yeah, a, a disadvantage. With a rangefinder, the minimum uh, focal uh, distance is usually, or the minimal focus distance is usually about, yeah, a meter, you know, three and a half foot. 
And so anything close focus, you would have to have a close focus lens. Um, mine does have that, but I, I don't use this camera for anything close focus. But if you're a little bit further away and you're shooting at f8, you, you know, you can bet your rosy cheeks that shot is going to be in focus. So with this, I get a lot more keepers. I mean, not a lot. I mean, I, I'm pretty decent shooting with an SLR, but I get a lot of um, keepers in terms of sharpness. And this lens, which is another thing, you know, sharpness isn't everything, but most, especially Leica lenses, Carl Zeiss lenses for the Leica, they're just sharper than anything SLR. And so therefore, this is also, an, you know, this, this, I mean, I would put the, uh, the King of Boca, the, that 50, what is it, the Sumicron or the Sumilux, up against this any day. In a popular photo in 1958, when this camera uh, came out, uh, they even said that this, um, help, you know, holds its own against any Leica lens. But um, sharper lenses usually on rangefinders. Um, again, sharpness isn't the end-all be-all because you can get very sharp lenses and this lens is very sharp for SLRs. You know, the Carl Zeiss um, Planar, what is it, the ZF or the ZT for Nikon, super sharp lens. Yes, I'm salivating over that. Do I need it? No. Do I want it? Yes. So I don't think there's always, it's a hobby. You shouldn't always have to have a justification to buy a certain product if you want it and you can uh, spend the money, go for it. But anyway, where SLRs are just downright better are portraiture. Critical focus, especially closer up, is just much better on an SLR. Um, what you see is what you get. You can really um, focus on or uh, compose it very accurately. Um, I've definitely had shots where the parallax error on my Konica 3A, yeah, um, uh, yeah, reared its ugly head a little bit, and that's always a little bit of a bummer, but it's not a deal breaker. Every tool has its um, purpose. These are just tools. They're, I'm comparing apples to oranges here, but a video like this could be helpful to somebody. Um, you don't need a Leica in order to have a really great high-end um, rangefinder experience. This Leica, again, I'll, uh, this Leica, <laughs> this Konica, I would put it up against any Leica. But guys, those are sort of a little bit of the differences that you will expect. Neither one is better than the other. I really enjoy shooting both. I enjoy my Konica. It's been my main shooter for the last, yeah, seven months now. What are we in September? Nine months now. And I've been loving it. The results are so stellar. I take portraits with it all the time. You're just a little bit further away. You have to be more mindful of your background. You can't blur it out in a way that has its charm, but sometimes you kind of want to blur out the background a little bit. But yeah, Neither one is better than the other. If you're just starting out, an SLR is probably the better deal um, because it just opens up more levels on or more opportunities for film, unless you're willing to splurge on something like a uh, Minolta CLE, which has a 1 4,000th of a shutter speed on the high end, just like the uh, FA has because then you can just, you know, shoot more films. This stopping out at 1 500 of a second, I'm usually just shooting 100, 100, 125 ISO films. You can still shoot a 200 ISO film. Of course, if you're um, at night, which is, uh, you know, the fun part of not having a light meter, you can set whatever value you want in there. And um, so you can push, pull, you can do whatever you want to. Um, of course, there's limitations there, but limitations lead to uh, better creativity, in my opinion. But guys, that's sort of it. Neither one is better than the other. I enjoy shooting both. Um, but yeah, that's sort of it. I'd like to hear in the comments from you, what do you shoot with? Do you prefer one platform over the other? Um, I don't prefer one over the other. I think both of them are just handy. Right now, just the Konica is just great for, as a daily driver, but um, 
that's just it guys. I hope this helped somebody make a choice in what they want to shoot um, or just buy both, who cares, right? You know, film cameras, some of them are ridiculously high priced, but there are still great deals. That Konica bought the whole set for 300 bucks. And in the advertisement, it said the lens alone, it's worth it. And it is, I, I, th that Konica lens, I don't have anything sharper anywhere else. So, Guys, let me know what you do. I love you and I'll see you in the next episode.